Honestly, going into this fight, I thought Corey Sanhagen would steamroll him. Firstly, Song Yadon's about 24 years old. Corey Sanhagen's about probably 28 to 30. Got more experience. Arguably could have beaten TJ Dillashaw. And also for Aljamain Sterling, could have explained why Corey Sanhagen did win this fight. Why he was winning the fight, I mean. Firstly, what we saw in the first round is he had Sonia Dong on the back foot. And what I liked about Corey Sanhagen is he's got this new style where he likes to wrestle. We haven't really seen that from him in recent fights. But in this fight, he started to adapt a new style of wrestling offensively. Not defensively, I'll get into that later on into the fight. But offensively, very good at wrestling. But Song Yadong has got good takedown defense. He wasn't able to ragdoll him or manhandle him against the cage. But what he was able to do is hold him against the cage and land some shots to his body to probably tire him down later on in the fight. So he couldn't land the takedown, but he got him against the cage and controlled him for a little bit. We saw him land a good spinning back kick on his head. It like skimmed his temple. It might not have had that much power in it, but that did tag him on the head. And that's something we see from Corey Sanhagen. He's got an unorthodox style where he mixes up so many random punches, a bit like Yair Rodriguez. Like he's got that really good flying knee that he lands in the fights. But I think yet again, BT Sports highlights are making it biased, making you think Song Yadon was winning the first round. If I'm honest, based on volume alone, Corey Sanhagen was winning the first round. Song Yadon, yes, he did get him down in that first round, but he didn't do any damage to him on the ground. We saw Corey Sanhagen like land elbows to his head on the ground. So if you want to talk about someone doing more damage on the actual ground, it looked like Corey Sanhagen. Song Yadon was doing the Nganu tactic. He was lying on him, but he wasn't landing, and that doesn't score you points. But one thing we did see, he got his back in that fight. What I liked about Corey Sanhagen, he did have good defense on the submission. Some people might think if that's Aljamain Sterling, he's gonna make him tap out like he did in the earlier fights. But that's one thing we've got to worry about, him giving his back away, he can't be doing that. He's the luckiest Song Yadong, but if it's any other elite grappler, like I mentioned before, he could get submitted. And Song Yadong's grappling also looks good offensively, kind of. He's good at clinching. I like the way how Corey used his jab. His jab was stopping Song Yadong from exploding in the middle, like throwing the hooks that he likes to do in fights. He wasn't able to do it because Corey had a very good jab on him, especially as a southpaw and orthodox. He could mix up the stance as well. Like he'd start off in orthodox and he'd switch over to southpaw, maybe throw a kick, then throw his jabs from southpaw, then move back to orthodox, throw jabs. It was like really hard to like, predict what he was going to throw that's why i say he's got very good orthodox striking right so the end of the round one you've got to give that to Corey sanhagen he did more volume on the feet he mixed up the takedowns he didn't get him down i don't think but he got him against the cage he held him against the cage and when song yudong got him against the cage he would bounce off also but song yudong was also doing that but the reason i will say Corey sanhagen won the round is he landed more strikes he also landed a flying knee which we see him knock out a lot of opponents with but he was using that jab very well, catching Song Yudong multiple times. Song Yudong couldn't get into his rhythm in that first round, so it's only fair to give that to Corey Sanhagen. So right now I have it 1-0 to Corey Sanhagen. Again in round two, for once we saw Song Yudong put him on the back foot, and as he was on the back foot, because Corey Sanhagen was only using his jab on him, it was allowing him to come up and land a hook, that rocked Corey Sanhagen. Corey Sanhagen goes to throw a hook. Song Yudong uses very good head movement, gets underneath the punch and catches him with a left hook that rocks him off balance. And you can see it stumbles him. He backs up against the cage. He loses his balance. And then Song Yudong starts to put him on the back foot, putting more pressure on him, looking to try and finish him. But he didn't follow up with the punches. So Corey Sanhagen started going back to his flying knee as he would get close to the center line of the octagon. One thing we've got to give Song Yudong credit for is his takedown defense and scrambles. Corey Sanhagen shoots through a double leg, gets him down, but he just bounces straight back up and comes up exploding to the head. But this round, it looks like more Song Yudong's winning the round because he's rocked him already. He's backing him up a little bit. They're mixing it up. One part of the fight, you see Corey Sanhagen on the back foot. Next part, you see Song Yudong on the back foot. But for the majority of this round, you see Sanhagen on the back foot, I would say. And he was evading a lot of his jabs. He adapted to it. In the first round, you saw him getting caught with a lot of jabs. But then in the second round, you're seeing him evade them. But I think that flying knee or his jab started to bust up the eye of Song Yadong. And remember what they say about MMA. It's about damage, not just control. So I believe in this second round, I think you've got to give it to Sanhagen for damage. But... 
if you want to base it off just the fight alone, you could have given this round to Song Yudong. It could have went either way. But I'm basing it off damage because that's the scoring criteria. So if I'm honest, you've got to give it to Sanhagen. If I want to be biased, I could give it to Song Yudong because he looks like he's landed more shots, but his shots haven't been as effective as Corey Sanhagen. Like Corey Sanhagen was blitzing him with elbows and an uppercut in this round. So I do believe it was the knee that split his eye open, or it could have been the jabs he was landing because he was landing a lot of jabs to his head. And he mixes up the stances really well. Like you can't tell what he's going to throw. Like he'll switch stance to orthodox, throw a leg kick, then he'll move back to southpaw and land an uppercut. Or he'll go to orthodox, throw an elbow, and then move back to southpaw and land a flying knee or something. So although Corey Sanhagen was on the back foot, it seemed like he was doing more damage. Again, Song Yudon was just looking for that one shot that was going to knock out Corey Sanhagen. Corey Sanhagen, more damage and more volume in this round, if I'm honest. Because Song Yudon throwing one punch at once, it's not doing anything. Sanhagen landing that jab, switching up an uppercut, throwing a knee. He is cutting him up and he's making it worse. So in my opinion, at the end of round two, you've got to give that to Corey Sanhagen. You might want to give that to Song Yudong. But if I'm honest, I've got to give that to Corey Sanhagen. Because although he wobbled him, look at the cut on his eye. That's what Corey Sanhagen's done. And I keep repeating this because people in the comments will say, oh, you've got to give round two to Song Yudong. I said, very close. It could go either way. But if you want to talk about damage, you've got to give it to Corey Sanhagen. It looks like Song Yudong was winning that round. But the cuts is which has changed my mind. That's why I will say this multiple times, just to let you know. So the thing that actually cut him open, it was like an upwards elbow that he caught him with. And that just split open the eyebrow. So it wasn't a knee. That's what I mean, unorthodox. You can't predict the upwards elbow that he landed on Song Yudong. And I'm not being biased towards Corey Sanhagen. I'm watching it as it is in live play. So this is how I'm seeing it. So you could say it was 1-1, one, one, or two and O oh, Corey Sanhagen, which I've got it. In the old criteria, you could have given it to Song Yudong, but if I want to be as honest as possible, it's got to go to Sanhagen. This round, we start to see more volume from Song Yudong though. He wasn't looking to just throw one strike. And even if he did, he'd follow up with another punch. But his head movement is very underrated. The amount of jabs that he evaded by slipping and parrying is good. But the main thing we've got to say in round three is, Corey Sanhagen, yes, his takedowns are quite good, but Song Yudong was stopping a lot of them. He was moving a bit like Dominic Cruz with his head movement in this third round. He caught him with a knee again. That was also targeting that eye and it was busting it up. Corey Sanhagen was doing something McGregor used to do in his fights where as his opponent would come forward, he'd hold his hand out forward to like stop them getting close into range. It's an old thing McGregor did years ago. He doesn't do it anymore. But I think it's some karate stance thing. Corey Sanhagen landed a knee on the cage which busted up his nose even more so you can see the damage that he's landing on him. And lastly, I'm not going to repeat it again, scoring's based off damage, not control. But it's a bit of both, but it leads more to effective damage. Round 3, we did start to see Corey Sanhagen struggling for takedowns quite a lot in this round, specifically. Because he would shoot for them, but Song Yudong would just sprawl out of them. And you would think, because Corey Sanhagen's more experienced, he'd be able to get these takedowns. But the thing is, he's not known as a wrestler. He's more of a striker with a bit of jiu-jitsu on him. But because he's fought all these high-level fighters like TJ Dillashaw, Aljamain Sterling, I was thinking, maybe his wrestling should look a bit better than this. He was getting him to the ground, but the one problem I have to say about it is he couldn't hold him down for long. And don't just look at the stats and think, oh, he's got more significant strikes, so he's winning the round. No, 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 because they don't always count it accurately. Sometimes they're a bit dodgy. So round three, I would say, yes, he was on the back foot, but Song Yudong wasn't doing anything effective. In round three, Corey Sanhagen was landing the more effective strikes, which is why you could see his nose and his eye was all busted up. And then you saw Corey Sanhagen, he didn't really have much blood on him. And if he had blood in him, it was Song Yudong's blood in him, not his own blood. Because he opened up a gash on his eyebrow that just split it open with knees in the third round. And it was landing that jab again that was cutting it up, making it worse. Making his nose bleed. And I believe the elbow on the bridge of the nose like split it open even more. You could see all the blood leaking down his nose. Personally, I would have given it 3-0 going into the fourth. But a lot of people are going to disagree and say I should have given it 2-0. 3-1. 
two on one. Like mentioned before, he reminds me of Yara Rodriguez, like a load of unorthodox strikes. We saw some high IQ moment from Song Yadong. Corey Sanhagen goes to throw a kick, he catches the kick, sweeps him. That is something that Sayen Chai from Thailand does. I made a video on him as well. And that is a very high level sweep to do. I don't know if he does Muay Thai, but that was very impressive. And he was lying down on him, but like saying, like I said before, Song Yudong, yes, he'll get him down, but he's not landing enough punches. It reminds me of Cyril Garn against Nganu, where he's lying down on him, but not landing enough on the ground. And if anything, it looks like Corey Sanhagen was landing more strikes. They weren't powerful, but he was landing more on the ground than Song Yudong was, despite him being on the ground and Song Yudong being on the feet. And he was able to get back up to his feet using the cage and then the level change where he switches him onto the cage. It looks like Corey Sanhagen goes through an inside trip as he takes him down to the ground. Yet again, you gotta give Song Yudong credit. Bounces straight back up to his feet with ease. Corey Sanhagen loves going for those flying knees, but he's got a chin on him, Song Yudong. Most fighters, if they got cut up like that, they're quitting. So we see Song Yudong start firing more in the fourth round. He's not winning the round, but you see he's got heart in him, he doesn't quit. He likes to come forward and apply the pressure despite him being like whacked in the head. He's a bit like Golovkin, the way that he can take a punch to the head and a flying knee and he won't like curl up and back off. He likes to come forward and land that lead left hook. And his head movement, it does remind me a bit like Dominic Cruz and he's very young as well. The way he can like evade these jabs and his crosses and he makes it look easy as well. He's not going to be like Dominic Cruz because they've got different styles, the way they throw punches. He doesn't set it up like Dominic Cruz, but he moves his head like him a lot. That's one thing we've got to talk about. He gets him down in the fourth round and this time Song Yudong does struggle to get up off the ground. This is probably due to fatigue and they are in the fourth round and Song Yudong's been cut up and injured. So there's no surprise. And one thing Corey Sanhagen was doing to make that cut worse is he was lying down onto his head kind of. Like he was like punching him in the head, he was like leaning on his head, so he's gonna aggravate that cut and split it open more. On the ground, a lot of it was Song Yudong like throwing punches on the ground, but you did see Corey Sanhagen land a few elbows on the ground. And he wanted to get up to stack guard, but then you could see Song Yudong pushing him off with his hips. Going into the fifth round, personally, I had it 4 and 0 Corey Sanhagen, but it wasn't dominant. But he won the rounds because he did more damage, landed more volume. Song Yudong was trying to swing using his lead hook. Wasn't working as such. He mixed up the takedowns as well. So if I'm honest, that is fair to give him round four as well. So a lot of people will say it's 3-1 Corey Sanhagen. Or you could argue 4-0 Sanhagen. There's no debate for it being 2-2, I'm sorry. The first round, people will only say it's Song Yudong's round because they'll be watching... BT Sport highlights, don't watch the highlights, watch the actual fight again and you will see despite it saying he had more significant strikes, it didn't look like it if you watched the fight. Corey Sanhagen was landing his jab more, he was snapping it on the bridge of the nose of Song Yudong and he was mixing up elbows, like that upwards elbow he landed onto his head. I think that was in the second round, but in the first round, I'm sorry, that's Corey Sanhagen's round. I don't know how we can argue that, it just was. So. Final score, if I want to be fair, 3-1 Corey Sanhagen going into the fifth round. But personally, I would have said it was 4-0 Corey Sanhagen. And going into the fifth round, people will say you can't say this, but you can. Corey Sanhagen was winning that into the fifth round. I believe Corey Sanhagen would have won in the fifth round. Because Song Yudong's got a very good chin, he wouldn't finish him in the fifth round. But it will go to the judges' scorecards and I, and I believe he would have won. So let me have a look at the judges' scorecards. I want to see how they scored the fight. So two judges had it as a draw going into round five. But then you had one judge who agreed like me and had it three rounds to one. But he had it the wrong way round. I would have given Song Yudong arguably the second round and made the first round here Corey Sanhagen. One thing we've got to say is you've got to give credit to Song Yudong. Very young, only 24 years of age. He is going to be one of the best fighters in bantamweight in a few years. Because he's only 24. I think he debuted at 19 in the UFC. He looked promising against someone like Corey Sanhagen who has fought the top fighters. I don't believe Song Yudong's ready for a Dillashaw or Aljamain Sterling 
next, but he would look promising against some of these other fighters in the division. I don't know who we could match him up with next, but very promising. And I believe he put in a good performance despite losing, but he should have lost this fight because he's young, he's not experienced enough yet, but we'll see you next time when he fights. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. How did you have it scored? Thank you for watching. Talk to you soon.